Whether in person or remote, open communication with your doctor is key to managing any condition, including heart failure. How have you been feeling? Um, I'm okay. Both are great options to continue having open conversations with your doctor about how you're feeling. I've had less energy. And when you speak openly with your doctor, they're better equipped to help. Visit heartfailuretalks.com to learn more. Yo, welcome to the bar. Come on and pull up a seat. And open up your Bible, what a wonderful feast The living bread and we're discussing what it means for the streets The inner cities and the burbs and every person we meet This where we tell us worldviews that we hear from world news In light of the scripture, we are here to serve you We're your source for resources To help you on your way as you battle mean forces This is for the people who can see the importance Of sound theology and the scripture that support it And this is for the truth lovers Biblically reforming, preaching Christ to the nations Yeah, welcome to the modern the Reformation, yeah. The Bar, Biblical and Reformed. Welcome everybody to The Bar. It's your boy Dwayne in the building. Right back in here, another Tuesday. Super excited as always to be coming through your speakers, through your earbuds, wherever you listen to The Bar. We're grateful that you're listening. And I love to start the show the same way by thanking the listeners. Thank you guys for listening to The Bar, tuning in to The Bar. You guys are the best, man. I've been doing this for six years now and you still listen to my podcast. You don't know how much that inspires me, how much that keeps me going, um, and I'm just super grateful. So I want to make sure I always, always uh, recognize you guys for uh, sticking it out with me all this time. And like I do every week, I bring you an awesome guest. Uh, this young man is uh, actually, you can't see the video, got a nice little background filter. <laughs> oh, man, but super excited to have on my brother Jordan. How you doing today, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing awesome. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing great. I'm doing great, man. First, man, uh, just thank you for taking time to come out on the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, never take for granted anytime anybody want to uh, come on my show. So uh, definitely want to thank you there. Um, and I want you to introduce yourself, uh, share anything you want to share with my uh, listeners, personal professional. Got the floor to do that right here. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Jordan Stefaniak. I am finishing up my PhD at the University of Birmingham in the UK, though I live in North Carolina. But at the moment of this recording, I am in Birmingham uh, <laughs> having a good time meeting with my supervisor and everything. Um, I'm the president and editor at the London Lyceum. So if you're familiar with them, we are an analytic Baptist and confessional sort of online center. We do, do podcasts. We have online articles. we got a journal and other stuff that we have fun doing as well as I am a research fellow for the Center of Faith and Culture at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary and got a wife, two young kids. And I'll give you a shout out for your podcast. You know, I'm a nerd, so I listen to lots of podcasts, but my wife doesn't listen to a lot of podcasts. And this is one of the few that she has listened to and really enjoyed. So I wanted to give you a big shout out to the Bar Podcast for that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is awesome. And, uh, and I apologize. I, <laughs> my my boss was calling me right when you was finishing that last part. <laughs> I was like, "Bro, I'm not working. I'm off. I'm offline, man." But no, that's super cool, man. Um, first, man, again, the the the, the London. How do you say it? I'm sorry. The London Lyceum. London Lyceum. Because I remember when I got the email, I was like, I recognize this, you know, and uh, and 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 love what you guys be doing. Um, so let's go back to that, man. Talk about how you got connected with that, and and uh, and just that whole kind of you know God's providence and that whole ordeal. Yeah. So I mean, it, it really is sort of God's providence. So I had no intention of making a podcast whatsoever, but <laughs> I moved to North Carolina and I ended up through Twitter, no less, meeting a guy who would ended up living in, in Wake Forest where I was moving to. And so yeah. we started hanging out and we would read books together in the morning at Starbucks at like 6 a.m. And he dropped this random comment one time, like, what if we started a podcast? And I was like, no, that's I would never do that. <laughs> and then I started thinking about it over the months. I was like, that would be fun. So we ended up just starting something from absolutely nothing. And it's been a ton of fun. Uh, we do a lot of interviews. So we enjoy trying to get experts in their different fields. I like philosophy a lot. So we end up doing sort of philosophical theology quite a bit, but mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun. So it, I really That's enjoy awesome. doing that and it, it's really grown quite a bit. So I guess people like it. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's definitely, uh, 
Um, I've even heard some some folks on that because I asked what podcast they're listening to. Uh, some folks have dropped dropped you guys' name a couple of times, um, and I'm trying to remember who was the first one that that I that I heard that I heard that, and I was like, okay, that's that's pretty cool. But um, that's really dope. And uh, I'll say you have saying that you would never do it and, and all of that from the jump. That sounds like my good buddy Daryl Harrison. Uh, you know, he was like no to a podcast, and then it ended up yeah. blowing up and being you know an amazing podcast. But uh, super cool, man. So as far as um, you know, uh, you talk about the guest and and having guests on, and and you say you use experts, so that's why I haven't been on yet, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm no expert <laughs> in anything, uh, but talk about some of the uh, the guests you've had and and some of the feedback you've gotten uh, with, with your with your podcast. You know, it's fun. We have all sorts of people on the podcast, so we're like confessionally reformed guys, but we have people who. Uh, have labeled themselves allergic to confessionalism <laughs> and all sorts of things across the spectrum. So we have people, we've had people on the podcast to affirm like universalism or we had, a, we had a series on the Trinity where we had different models of the Trinity and we invited somebody who was a Unitarian to come on and explain his position. So really we try to get everybody across the spectrum and say, come talk to us. We're going to talk to you. I mean, w- this is our context I mean, we're reformed Baptists. Um, but we want to hear what you have to say. So we did a series mm-hmm. on denominations. So we had people all across the spectrum. We had Anglican, an Anglican, Gerald Bray. We had Pentecostal, a Pe- Pentecostal, a Roman Catholic, Francis Beckwith. So it was really like, I want to learn. I want to be curious. I want to engage what you have to say and allow other people to hear it directly from them. Uh, so we're, in a way, I like to be a source that just generates thinking. So I want mm. people to start thinking. I don't want to just tell them what to think. I want them to learn how to think. So I want them mm-hmm. to be thinking through this person is talking about this. I'm going to push back here and there, but I want mm-hmm. them to be th- let the wheels turn in their own minds and thinking, well, he said that. That doesn't sound right. You guys have said this before to let them kind of make their own decisions on some of the stuff. So it's a lot of fun. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. So I'll be honest. I keep my my uh, my guests uh, in the camp. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's rare. It's rare that someone sneaks in um, because my my podcast is more or less like a pointing resource kind of thing. Um, yeah. Like an exposing my my listeners to other people, and so I, I'm careful of who I allow on because I don't want to send them you know, in, in their own direction. Cause, cause being on here yeah. is kind of like an endorsement. So it's a different format. Um, so one thing that I, I, you know, noticed, uh, earlier today when I was doing some snooping, uh, is you guys actually have like some events and stuff, man. I love that because that's something I want to do eventually. Uh, talk about some uh, upcoming events, unless it, I'm looking at some old, you got some, no, coming? you, you got it right on. You got it right on. So we oh, just awesome. did one on political theology, a Protestant political theology where we okay. had essentially, it was almost like there were four different guys. They have some nuances of their views, but it was almost sort of like two teams to some degree mm-hmm. where there's this more traditional, older, reformed sort of where the magistrate should endorse Christianity of some sort and legislate Christianity. And then the two others were more free church Baptists where the church and state are separate, where the mm-hmm. where the state should be in promoting religious freedom and, and pluralism. So that was it's basically like we have two hour segment of you tell me what your position is now you can critique some of each other now let's talk and now let's let some of the listeners ask some questions of you guys and we've got two more coming up this year uh one on classical theism uh trinity and simplicity so that's been uh, a, a big topic of late so i'm really excited about that one we have some of the leading experts in the world on this and they're going to be sort of debating and it'll be a lot of fun and then we've got one on covenant theology and we've got a range of views on there where you've got this new popular Reformed Baptist 1689 federalism, and we've got a more traditional Reformed Baptist sort of two covenants, uh, I guess, two covenants or two administrations, same covenant of grace. And then you've got the traditional Reformed uh, Pado baptist version, and then you've got the sort of progressive covenantalism of Steve Wellam. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, anybody can attend. You can watch online, and then what you'll get, like, 30 ish minutes to where you can call in live and be on the show and be recorded, or you can just chat in your question if you want. And we can just ask them that question. So it went pretty well the first time, hopefully it goes well the next two times and we'll see, we'll probably learn some things and, and hopefully make it better in the future. Sure. Sure. That's pretty cool, man. So you said people can attend. Is that going to be in, uh, what's the location? 
it's online. So I mean, it's to, you can attend I you wherever mean, like, you're people at. People could come and no. like, an event. Oh, I was no, like, man, you know, I'm not too far from Wake Forest, man. I can show up. <laughs> We've thought about putting on an in-person conference, but I do not have the bandwidth to do that. Since you know, I, I work understand. a normal full-time job, and then you've right. got all this other stuff. I'm like, maybe in the future, but at this <laughs> point, I just can't make it happen. I was excited, man. I was like, I, that's not far for me to drive. <laughs> I'm in Fayetteville. I can get there yeah but uh no that's pretty cool man i love that love the idea um and and love how it's all centered around you know uh just discussion man is a lot of times we don't get those conversations we don't we don't you know hear both sides we don't let people uh state their view and and be able to uh go back and forth without it being an argument or you know you're turning the lights out and like shutting the door and just you know, ending it all. So I, I love that you guys are facilitating that. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So and as far clear, as go ahead. I know like your podcast, you know, you endorse everybody who comes on uh, for us. We don't endorse everybody who comes on. Exactly. So like when I talk about having a Unitarian in the first five minutes, we're explaining we're not Unitarians. We don't right. endorse that, but we want to hear what you have to say. Right. So tell me, and I'm going to ask you some questions and we'll go through it. So it's it's yeah. clear that we're not endorsing these things. Right. That That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I had to get on uh, my man, Brandon Kimmer from American Gospel because American Gospel, too. I felt like he was endorsing uh, all of the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the guys. I was like, bro, like you gave them a lot of playtime, man. He should have yeah. made a little subtitle or something. But anyway, um, <laughs> so. I, what what are some some more things? I love the event thing uh, as far as podcast, man. And and I'll be honest, I'm I'm actually looking for inspiration, man. What are some things you guys are looking towards or or working towards, and and things you want to see happen with this with this podcast? Yeah. So the coolest thing that we're doing right now is called the John Gill Project. I think so. If you're not familiar with John Gill, he's uh, you know 17th, 18th century Reformed Baptist. I what was he born? 1697. Uh, died 1771, pastored Metropolitan Tabernacle Church where Charles Spurgeon eventually was. Uh, he did that for like 50 years. I'm not, I'm not the historian of the group. I'm the philosopher, theologian of the group, so I get some of this stuff mixed up. But yes. he's really the crown jewel of Baptist theology. He's the first mm. Baptist to write a systematic theology. He's the first Bab- I th- He may be the first to ever write uh, commentary on the whole Bible. Maybe maybe it's just the Baptist, but he's he's the first either Baptist to do that or the first to do that. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's his work is just it's really helpful. And when you think over the last I don't know fifteen years, there's been a lot of reform guys who've been translated or republished. You think Herman Bavink and these guys who probably twenty years ago most people don't know about. Now they're benefiting and getting all these riches from these people. Well, right. when you start to think about, are there any Baptists out there that are good like him and say, yes, but most people don't know about him or don't have access to him. And John Gill, I think, is one of those people who is extremely beneficial. Now, he had some weirdo stuff on ju- justification. He had this like eternal justification view. Um, but for the most part, he's rock solid, orthodox, um, provides a robust reformed systematic theology so if you want to get it today you have to go to like tiny small publishers and it's like tiny little bitty print that if you wanted your church members to read it or if you wanted your pastor to read it it's just it's it's not really exciting they're going to look at it and say ah i'm probably not going to read this i'm going to read something else that looks more i guess modern type setting so we've partnered with h and e publishing and the andrew center for Andrew Center Fuller for Baptist Studies, which is headed up by Michael Haken. And we basically we put together an editorial board and all this stuff to where we're going to republish significant portions of his work. We're going to have our goal is to have 20 total volumes in the series. And it's going to be modern typesetting. So it's going to look nice. It's going to have nice covers. It's going to be clean, fresh, um, so that you can actually give those resources to your church members. You can give them to your pastors and you can begin to utilize these resources. So a lot of Baptists, they have to dip into other traditions, which is not bad. I think it's sure. my favorite theologian is Herman Bavink, that, and I'm a Baptist. I, I love him. I think he's my favorite by far. But John Gill's up there and I just don't have access to him. So I want to give Baptists access to the best theologians in their past. So we're working on transcribing all that work. Our first volume in this series is going to be sort of an abridged and 
edited selection from his body of divinity and body of, body of tra- practical divinity. So it's going to be like 300-ish pages. So if, if you took the whole thing, it's going to be like over 1,000 pages. Mm. Or to condense it down to the most important sections, cut out some of the stuff that's like, you spent 20 pages talking about something that most people in the pew have, they, they're just not interested in that. Or you were talking about the Hebrew aspect of this thing. Let, let's just cut this out and get to the meat of what you're discussing mm-hmm. so that church members can benefit from this. So that's the first volume. We plan to have a full three volume set of his systematic theology as well, as well as other small little volumes, pieces of his works. He's got some unpu- sermons that are at Duke University that are not published at all. No one has access to them. So you have to go read the handwritten manuscripts and transcribe those. And we hope to get those in the series as well. So I think this is a really cool, fun project uh, to awesome. begin publicizing, republicizing, and almost uh, popularizing his work again. So I think the more good, solid Orthodox resources we have across the spectrum, especially in the Reformed tradition, I'm all about that. So I want to just resource what's in, our, in my own Baptist tradition and say, we've got some good resources to bring to the table too. I love Turretin. I love all the Calvin. But I want to also have Gil there because I think he's just as helpful as these other guys. I love that. I love that. Yeah, man. Definitely. Amen to that for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell you, you know, being a guest on a podcast, that means once it's, you know, it's published and stuff, you have to send me copies. It's just it's just part of it. <laughs> I don't think anybody warned you or anything, just so you know. But uh, <laughs> I'll just get it, man. But, yeah, no, that's that's really cool, man. And I, I'm glad you brought that up, man, because I've heard about Gil. But like you said, just not just in passing nothing you know like tangible or you know things that we could actually uh easy to get to and read uh so that, that that's I'm, I'm glad you guys are, are doing that you about to say something else no i was going to say if you are interested in the project you can go to our website the london lyceum.com if you hover over the little resources tab there's a thing that says the john gill project you just click that um and you can read all about the project it'll give you all the details and everything and let you know release dates of different things like that. And awesome. everything we've talked about, the London Lyceum, you can find all that stuff on our website. The events that we talked about, everything in there, it's all there. You can go click on it. If you're on your mobile phone, you know, there's that like, what, that three dots sort of thing at the top. You <laughs> click and it, it yeah, gives man. you the drop down options. So you can do that. Um, nice. But either way, all that, most all that information is there. Um, as well as our yeah. contact and stuff. So if you got emails, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Perfect. Perfect. So we'll definitely include that link in the show notes where you guys can click on it and uh, listen to the podcast, check out the events, all that good stuff. And so right here, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Did you know your daily routine could be the key to your next vacation getaway? Nerd Wallet helps you compare travel and cashback cards to turn your everyday purchases into your next unforgettable getaway experience. Traveling doesn't have to be expensive, and daily expenses don't have to get in the way of your next escape. Imagine purchasing food and earning points towards a free hotel room, or earning points toward a flight by simply buying gas. Regardless of your financial situation, the Nerd Wallet team will help you make sense of your options at nerdwallet.com. Get expert information from an award winning team of nerds to make even the most complicated money questions and topics easy to understand. NerdWallet's dedicated team will offer the tips you need to get that vacation you've been waiting for without breaking the bank. NerdWallet offers everything you need to make sound financial decisions while costing you absolutely nothing. Find the smartest financial products for you on NerdWallet.com or in app stores by downloading the NerdWallet app. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Pastor Chris Hernandez. And this is Jimmy De Los Santos. And we're your boys from SolarCast. We're just a couple of average guys who came out of the charismatic movement to a reformed understanding of theology. That's right. Catch us with a new episode every Tuesday morning on all the platform networks, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and the like. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Sola underscore cast. Also search for us on Facebook, like the page, share the page. Let's get to the meat. Let's do it. All right, we're back in here, my brother Jordan. This is the side of the episode, the fun part. I guess it's all fun, but this is the fun, fun part where we do the bar signature questions. These are three questions I ask all of my guests. So the first signature bar question is, what kind of music do you listen to? You know, I listen to a little bit of a range. Um, it 
normally doesn't go together. So my primary <laughs> listening is like post hardcore sort of music. Um, so back in the day when warp tour was a thing, you know, like that sort of stuff, gotcha. um, still listen to that probably every day. And then I also, I do like rap and I do like, uh, classical music. So I don't, those three don't usually go together, but <laughs> Hey, I like them all. So I listen to them. I love it. I love it. Good stuff. All right. Next signature bar question is what book or books are you currently reading? Oh, well, I just started uh, neo Aristotelian uh, perspectives on like science and metaphysics. Um, so that's a little bit academic. I just finished a book by Paul Griffiths on Christian flesh. It was weird. So <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of glad to be done. <laughs> but yeah, that so those are the two that I'm currently reading. I'm still. I'm almost finished with Jennifer Hertz putting on virtue, which I think is a fantastic book. It's very, very thick, very, very dense, but it is extremely helpful thinking through virtue formation and the different models that are out there. So I recommend that book. Uh, absolutely. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. <clears throat> All right. Last thing at your bar question is what podcasts or sermons do you listen to? If any, well, I listen to a couple. I mean, I, I I probably listen to about 10 to 15 podcasts irregularly. I think mm -hmm. the one I listen to the most is probably like doctrine and devotion, just because mm -hmm. I think those Joe and Jimmy are, are hilarious. So I like the fun banter at the beginning and I enjoy listening to them. I listen to quite a few others irregularly. So like I listen to your podcast irregularly. Um, and part of this is because now I work from home, so I don't have the commute that I used Dang. to have where I Dang. would listen to yes. podcasts on the way to work, on the way home. So now it's like if I'm taking a walk with the kids, I listen to a podcast or something like yeah. that, but it's it's yep. just not as consistent. Um, yeah. What else do I listen to? Uh, the Reluctant Theologian. I listen to his podcast. It's interesting. I disagree with almost everything they talk about, but he's a super fun host and it's interesting topics. Right, right. No, that's pretty cool, man. Definitely have to shout out Joe and Jimmy. Those are my yeah. brothers. Uh, we 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 don't. We used to talk a lot. We don't talk as much anymore. Uh, <laughs> they've got busy. I've gotten busy. Um, but yeah, doctrine, doctrine and devotion is still is uh, definitely one of my top five for sure. Those guys are solid, fun guys. Like I said, I enjoy the banter as well. Uh, sometimes I just wonder how long can they actually go, and I think. <laughs> I think that the time is 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 unlimited, but uh, but no, and uh, and thank you for listening to my show. I know you mentioned it earlier. I was distracted with the other call, but I appreciate that. And uh, shout out to your wife as well. I think you mentioned that as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I appreciate that. I I understand. You know, with my show, uh, people look for names they recognize. <laughs> that's usually how it works, and and that's that's the that's the the beauty of it. So no, I totally get that. All right, brother. Well, listen. I love to end the show the same way by giving you an opportunity to uh again let the listeners know where they can find you guys and and all the things you got going on and any words of encouragement you want to leave us with before we slide out of here man so i guess you can find pretty much everything about me at the london lyceum.com so i've got links to my papers and different things like that that i have published uh i as well as my cv that's on there i need to put all the places I've been on podcasts and different YouTube things on there. So you can click on those links if you want to make it easy. Cause I usually end up talking a lot of people have me on to talk about things like classical theism and stuff like that. So if you're interested in those things, that's where my interest really lies. I like doing some anthropology stuff too. Uh, I've dabbled with some work in gender though. It's a fiery topic. So you gotta be careful. Um, I published a little bit on that and, and, uh, presented at a conference on that. So if you're interested in those sort of things, that's kind of like the anthropology and doctrine of God sort of stuff is where my wheelhouse is. Uh, you can find most of that stuff at the London Lyceum.com. And as far as an encouragement, I mean, you guys are listening to this. I mean, I think you're probably mostly all in that sort of lowercase r reformed camp, at least. Um, I think there's a good encouragement to to remember to be charitable to others. So there's a way that you can be cheerfully confessional in your own tradition and be charitable to others who disagree. 
So I think James 3 is a tremendous model of how we should go about uh, thinking and wisdom and interacting with others. We should be gentle. We should be kind. We should be open to reason. That doesn't mean we have to give up our tradition or give up our convictions. But I think as a Christian, we should always be seeking and pushing towards being gentle and kind to others, especially in the polarized environment we are in. The more we pursue those things, the more we will stand out as Christians. I love that. Yes, sir. That is so real. Because uh, I, I try to be cool with everybody. I'm definitely little yeah. R, but, you know, we have on some Presby's. They'll be, you know, Reformed Baptist <laughs> in heaven. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But no, bro, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, and I, I, like again, uh, thank you for, for coming on. We'll definitely have everything in the show notes as far as the, the link to the website so you can check out everything. Make sure you check that out. Also, thank you to the listeners for listening to The Bar Podcast, your favorite podcast. Thanks for checking us out every Tuesday. Go to thebarpodcast.com. Check us out there as well as hit that uh, tab for the network to check out the podcast on the network. Also, if you want some bar gear, go to thebargear.com. And until next time, you guys, God bless. And we are out. You made it. Checked out of office to check into the sweet views of this place where the kids aren't asking for the Wi-Fi. Mom, can we go to the pool? And when you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it.